Hey, welcome back to Diary of a Church Planner, where we are cataloging the launch of Voice Church, a new church plan right here in Orange County in a town called Tustin, California. Now, as we begin, I just want to make a confession off the top. I originally launched this series a couple months ago, and then I said there would be a new video every couple weeks or so, and there hasn't been for a couple months. And I think, in a weird way, that's kind of a part of the church planner life, because I feel like I am working harder than I ever have. Now, any of my friends would tell you over the past couple decades of leadership and church ministry that I'm not exactly a lazy person. I tend to, if I struggle with anything, it's definitely workaholism. I have a hard time turning my brain off. Uh, but I feel like I am busier uh, and my life and my schedule is fuller than it has ever been. So maybe that's part of why it's taken me so long to do one of these videos again, or maybe uh, it's just an excuse. It's probably a little bit of both. I think one of the things that's been difficult for me to navigate as I create the content for these videos is that I want to be helpful. I want to give content to church planners or those part of a church plant, uh, but also realize that some of the things that I may talk about, I really don't want to hurt the people that are on our team. Like, let me give you an example. Say we're talking about how to keep the people on your team motivated and engaged, but here's the thing is, this is like the most important thing that I do in my life. Obviously family, my relationship with God and all that, but man, this is all consuming, planning the church. But for other people on launch team, this is just part of what they do. So if we were one-on-one -on -one grabbing coffee as a church planner, I would talk to, about some very specific things you can do to keep the people on your team engaged, but realizing you gotta brace your heart for some disappointment because some people on your team, it just isn't their main thing. It's one of the important things in their lives, but they have all sorts of other things going on. And so I don't wanna talk about that in too much detail on these videos because I realize that people on the launch team are gonna watch these videos and I don't want them to think I'm talking about them. And so although I wanna be helpful to you as a church planner, more than that desire is my desire that I really don't wanna hurt people on our team here locally. I want them to know how much I value them and appreciate every little bit they're able to give to the church. So that's one of the main things is I've really found it difficult challenging to put together content that's helpful, but also isn't uh, hurtful to the people uh, around that are close to us that may be watching this video as well. But at the same time, I don't wanna be so general and vague and 30,000 foot that it's not really helpful to where you're at right now. And the second probably just as big, if not bigger reason why I haven't done a video in a couple months is simply because it takes a lot of filming and editing time and I'm not good at filming or editing. As you can probably tell from the editing quality or production value of this video, I'm not good at filming or editing. But here's the thing, I'm recommitting to doing a video every two to three weeks because the more we're going down this church planning journey, the more I wish there were videos like this that we could watch and the more there's things that we're learning that I want to relay to you. But first, let me give you some updates of where we're at right now in April of 2018 as we launch our church. The first thing is this, we have a church home. We are no longer homeless as a church and it's been a crazy series of miracles for us to find a place to meet, but we have an amazing location. And if you're ever here in person or you wanna text or call me, I'd love to tell you more about that. Second thing is we may actually launch with a denomination and Natalie and I have been talking about potentially launching with a denomination for a lot of reasons covering and accountability. So we're actually vetting an organization right now and they're vetting us and it's probably one that you never would have thought that we would be going with, but we're really excited about the potential of it. And as it gets more formalized, we'll let you know more information. Another thing is the team is growing. Uh, a great couple moved, family of four just moved from Chicago to join our team. Uh, there's another couple moving from Chicago as long as several more individuals from the Chicagoland area. Uh, there's a couple moving from Alabama to join our team and people are joining the team left and right here locally. And so many God miracles. We're, we're literally saying, God, would you bring in a drummer or God, would you bring someone to do video or would you bring someone to give spiritual depth and be almost a father and a mother to our church and God is providing. And it's been so, so, so cool. Probably in the last week and a half, two weeks, the team has grown by probably 15, 20 people, which has been absolutely uh, amazing. Another thing that's pretty cool is that we're learning to love our city and engage with our community on a more intentional basis. It's been amazing how God has developed relationships and ways that we can serve our city, to serve the city council, to, to serve the uh, parks and rec teams 
uh, through all sorts of events. What's cool about this, the, the city of Tustin is there's so many events happening all the time. It's very community minded. The community serves like crazy and we're honored to be a part of that. And so we're serving our city more and more. I think we have like two or three events this weekend alone. So what we're doing right now mainly is we're focusing our time on building the team and then raising funds to help launch uh, the church. And so we're doing interest social. So every couple of weeks we're doing things like a broom ball tournament, a family hike in the mountains here. You can do that here in California in the winter. A coffee tastings. This Sunday we're doing a big cookout in the park and one of the guys on the team smokes all these meats all night. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic. So all that cool stuff is happening. And then Natalie and I are focusing our efforts on fundraising, which ironically is what we're talking about today is the idea of fundraising. Now. There's a lot of things that as church planners we have to do. We kind of have to wear all the different hats. And for some people, what's most difficult to them is raising a team. Team leadership, team development is very difficult. Or for some other people, team leadership, team development is, is rather simple. For them, their struggle may be creating government and bylaws and org structure and all that sort of process kind of stuff for the church. For us, for Nally and I, Team building has been very natural. Uh, org structure and bylaws, we kind of enjoy and kind of geek out at that kind of stuff. The thing that's been difficult for us, the thing that's brought us to our knees in prayer has been fundraising. For me, this is one of the first things I think about when I wake up in the morning. It's one of the last things I think about when I go to bed at night. If I'm ever stressed or feeling anxious, I need to just go to the gym and work out or go for a run, it's probably because I'm thinking about the finances of the church. And so this is why I, th I thought it would be appropriate for our second video to talk about some of the philosophies that have driven us around this idea of fundraising. Look, at the end of the day, there's no right way to do it. There's no one way to do it. I'm sure there's a lot of wrong ways to fundraise, but you gotta determine as you read all the different books and hear all the different pieces of advice, what's right for you in light of your personality, in light of your gift mix, in light of how you see the church and how you see the world, what is right for you? Because just like David couldn't wear Saul's armor, you can't just wear everyone else's best practices for fundraising. Let me just give you some of the principles that have guided us as we have fundraised and right now continue to fundraise. We need a financial miracle over the next month and a half for us to launch or else Voice Church is just an idea. But let me walk you through some of our principles and hopefully it'll help you. The first principle is this, is that God will build his church. God will build his church. It's not you, it's not me that builds the church. It's not because we're super talented or we got the right keyboard or the right worship style or we nailed service order or we got the right six different kind of lights and movers and haze to get service going. That this church has gotten this far and we will succeed, quote unquote, as a church by reaching those far from faith because God will build his church. And it's been obvious from the very beginning that as we get into impossible situation after impossible, impossible situation, that it was gonna be God who brought the miracles and he has so far. So I guess sleep a little easier, have some peace because there's some things that the Lord will need you to do, but you don't have to provide the miracle. This is God's weight to carry. So take it off of your shoulders. Go to sleep okay, realizing that even though you and I are sleeping at night, God is still at work on people's hearts. So God will build his church. Second principle is that you will make a lot of contacts and you will get a lot of no's. It's okay. So you will make a lot of contacts. So Natalie and I made a list of over 200 people that we could ask to financially partner with us to help Voice Church launch. And there were text messages, there were phone calls, and there were emails, a lot of coffee appointments and lunch appointments. We made a lot of asks. And because of that, we got a lot of no's. And we got a lot of yeses too, but we got a lot of no's. And here's the thing, you cannot take it personally. Don't get offended. Allow people to hear from God and then respond back in obedience to God. And sometimes responding back in obedience means they're gonna write you a check. And there's sometimes responding in obedience means they're not gonna to give to your church plans. They're gonna to give to this missionary or they're gonna give a big gift to their church wherever they're at in the world or they're gonna their church is in a building program and so they're gonna to give towards that. And you don't want them to give to you because you want them to give to what the, what the Lord is asking them to give. 
And the Lord really had, you know, dealt with me pretty harshly one night. I was kind of frustrated because people who I thought were my friends weren't giving financially to the church. And they said they believed in us and are praying for us. And I'm like, bull, why don't you give to this? Because can't you see that we really need you to give? And I really felt God was saying, Taka, do you understand that you're not the most important thing going on in the world? That you're not the most important thing going on in California or even in Tustin? That there's some other things I'm asking people to give to and all of them matter, some of them way more than you? So allow the ones that are supposed to give to give to you. And I also really felt that the Lord was taking me and Natalie on a journey where we needed to build our faith muscles as we were fundraising so that we can be in a better position to lead the church. But you're gonna make a lot of asks and be a lot of people are gonna tell you no and don't take it personally. It's not a knock on you. Another thing to consider is, man, pray. Pray that other people will financially carry the burden with you. In the same way that you're not gonna run sound and do worship and do announcements and do websites and kids and there are some very specific things that you are called to do in the same way that there's some other people that feel called to raise money where you may feel awkward making the ask. Uh, there are other people that love it. Just talking to a friend the other day who just joined the team and he's like, I have no problem asking people for money. Pray that God would bring people on your team that have a heart to fundraise. Next thing, and you cannot miss this. This is so important. While you are launching your church, focus on launching the church, not on running the church. If you're a normal pastor, you're gonna want to start small groups and Bible studies and discipleship pathways, and you're gonna wanna do men's ministry and prayer nights and worship nights and schedule mission trips and retreats and all that stuff. And here's the thing, that stuff is good and you will get there. But if you don't focus on launching a church, and it mainly comes around raising funds and building your team. If you don't focus on launching your church now, you won't have a church later to do all that stuff with. That stuff will come. This is a very short season in the grand scheme of things where you have to focus on launching your church. And then once your church launches, after X number of months, then you can run a church and you'll get there. But in this season, focus on launching your church. It doesn't mean that all these things are bad. It means they're not right for right now. You'll get there. The future has this crazy way of becoming the present. It'll get here, but right now focus on launching the church. Build your team, raise your launch funds, or that stuff will never come. Second to last thought is this. Don't, for the love of God, don't manipulate people. Don't tell people, God told me that you were supposed to give, or God said to call you up, or God said to tell you this number unless God really did. Prophets would get executed if they said the Lord said something and the Lord never said it. So take that kind of sobriety whenever you use the Lord's name. In other words, don't take the Lord's name in vain. Don't attach the Lord's name to something it shouldn't be attached to. Make the ask, share the vision, share your dream, share what you see in your heart, share the vision God has given you, but don't spiritually manipulate people into giving. Don't guilt them. Don't shame them. Have enough confidence in your vision. Have enough confidence in your dream. And by God, have enough confidence in God Almighty that he will provide the funds. But do not manipulate people. And lastly, same as first, God will build his church. And so as you're fundraising, calm down. Go for a walk. Thank God ahead of time before you see any evidence of it. And it will happen. But relax, trust that God is working. And sometimes we can mistake God's silence for his absence. Sometimes we can see inactivity and think God is inactive. But it doesn't mean that he is. God's with you. God is for you. And this will happen. So in the comments below, write best practices. What are some things that really worked for you? Or maybe you have some questions that maybe I or other people that are watching this video could help with, all right? Also, what do you want us to do future videos about? We'll do videos about how to pick location, how to build team, uh, how to pick networks and denominations. What do you wanna talk about? How can we best help you? 
So with that, man, I'm really excited that you're watching these videos, whether you're a church planner or you're part of a church plant, or you're just curious of what it's like on the inside of a, of a church plant, uh, I'm really glad you're on this journey. If there's any way I can ever help you, uh, hit me up. I'd love to help out in any way that I can. All right, God bless. Have a great one. Take it easy.